Hello everyone, welcome to episode 13 of Altengrad City from City Skylines. We started building the custom train station two episodes back, so today we will continue with that. We will expand it by building a train depot, some maintenance buildings, more tracks and putting some details all around the place. I really wanted to find some real life reference for today's uh, project, for this train depot. Preferably some kind of a plan for a historical depot or at least uh, you know how it used to be uh, how the tracks were positioned and the buildings obviously were built around the tracks uh, back in the day, so some hundred years ago. Because depots, you know, kind of are different today, especially for, you know, the electric trains and diesel trains. Uh, for steam trains, it's a tiny bit different. So I really wanted to find some real life reference for that. And I did manage to find some kind of a, some kind of like a floor plan or just a plan of tracks and buildings. Uh, for one particular train depot from uh, you know this country so that's nice that's nice that I could have some kind of a reference like that and I decided to pretty much copy uh, the plan and uh, obviously with some tiny tiny changes to fit it into this particular site in here but uh, more or less uh, just use uh, the the real life thing so that's why I'm using these transfer tables there's gonna be a couple more uh, actually two more there's gonna be three in total and one one uh, the you know the the rounded one the turntable as well and uh, it's obviously going to just form this uh, part of the depot now the depot itself is kind of going to be divided in two parts uh, it's going to be divided by that road that goes uh, you know through this place to towards the river now that's a road where i thought that some kind of a some kind of a medieval or maybe even some younger fortifications used to be and uh, when the train station was originally built in i don't know some kind of uh, some kind of 19th uh, century uh, some some year uh, probably in first half of the 19th century something like that then uh, the walls for the city still used to be uh, used to be there right and they really wanted to put uh, the the train station somewhere closest to the downtown of the city to the center obviously so uh, what they did is they cut uh, some holes into the city walls which were not not longer no longer really that useful anyway so it didn't, didn't really matter too much and they built the passenger platform uh, part of the train station there now, the rest of the train station, which means some maintenance buildings, obviously, something that we are building over here, uh, obviously needed to be built, uh, you know, outside of the city walls, because inside the city walls, obviously, there was not much space, so they only did what was necessary in there, which means, obviously, places to board the trains, but the rest of the things could have been easily placed outside the walls. And obviously, as time went forward, uh, the walls were destroyed because they were uh, totally not needed anymore. And uh, the, the depot probably expanded somewhat, but some remnants, especially the positioning of the depot, obviously reflects the historical situation, how it probably was and uh, how, it, uh, how it just needed to be to fit the city. So this means that we only have that one bridge. It's kind of wide still, I think like four tracks or three tracks go over it, so it's relatively wide. Uh, there's probably going to be some changes uh, as we go forward in time still, but uh, right now we just have that one uh, stone bridge right there. So that's kind of like a bottleneck for this uh, train station or for this entire area for the tracks, right? We have the, let's say, modern part of the depot on that uh, one side, the one I was building right now, and uh, this bridge is just basically dividing that part with this uh, other left side from this view, right? Which is obviously the part where we have the, the passenger part of the station. We also have that tiny little uh, cargo depot, uh, cargo station which I obviously built uh, earlier, and uh, and uh, we are also going to extend uh, some uh, some other parts uh, in this area as well. So. This episode is going to be only about the depot, but obviously the depot is kind of a big project and it's only going to be completed, really completed, when all the surrounding areas are also uh, finished, which means putting all the buildings to these uh, just neighboring streets and uh, just detailing all around the place, which is obviously something that's uh, still going to take some time. So we are going to just uh, prepare for that. We are going to finish this bridge, that uh, retaining wall that I did earlier on the side of that street. We're obviously going to put some buildings there and details and probably stairs to just uh, overcome all these different levels so that's also going to be something something nice I'm, I'm really hoping that it's going to fit the entire area 
Now, like I said, we're also going to expand a tiny bit uh, the portion of the station which is uh, like inside the city, let's call it, right? Over the bridge. Now, this part of the station was probably not there because there probably used to be some buildings inside here because when the city walls were part of the city still, there probably wasn't that much construction, you know, past the city walls. Everything was just concentrating in inside the walls, right? But when the, when the obviously, when the, when the walls uh, get torn down, uh, people kind of realized that they can expand the city just freely anywhere, right? So uh, suddenly there was more open space around the train station and they could even expand some tracks in there and put uh, some different things uh, in there, in that open area. So that's exactly what are, what are we going to do with those uh, tiny little tracks that I put there, just a couple of tracks. Now, we also do need to put some buildings around the train depot because it's just not going to look that good if uh, there's not going to be anything around it. So I'm just going to position basically like one row of uh, some random buildings in here, slightly modern buildings. I'm not really doing uh, the, the, the medieval buildings in here anymore because uh, we are slightly in a more uh, modern part of the city. Well, not necessarily modern, but um, modernly uh, reworked, let's call it, right? Because, like I said, this part, I think I even talked about it with the train station episode, when they used to, when they, when they built the train station, when they expanded, then uh, there's probably, there was probably some, uh, some huge overwork connected to the train station project as well. So the medieval buildings that used to be in this place probably got torn down, all of them. So now for the expansion of this part of the of the train station or the train depot. So I like I like I said I was following a uh, real life plans for one particular train station and it had like a huge area for coal. Obviously we are still in a, in a in a steam era for trains so we obviously need to have some place to store coal and obviously load it onto the trains. So I was not exactly sure how it looked like in real life because I only had the plans, I only had the position of the tracks and it had something very very similar like this. It had uh, tracks uh, going into this very empty area and the tracks obviously had uh, quite generous spacing between each other so that we can store all this coal. Uh, in this time period the coal was probably transported into the station by other, another trains, right? Uh, unlike today when uh, coal can be also transported by cars and all that, but back in the day it was uh, mostly mostly only only trains for for uh, transporting this kind of cargo, right? So it obviously makes sense that uh, it can be, it must be built so that the coal uh, should be like conveniently transported into the station and obviously conveniently loaded into the trains as well, right? But later as we progress in time, maybe, well, actually, when we progress in time, we are not, we are going to get rid of steam trains altogether. So that's uh, that's one uh, less uh, one problem to to worry about, right? So uh, we are going to just uh, detail this place. Uh, I was thinking that uh, we need to build some way to uh, we need to build something to load the coal onto onto the locomotives, right? Uh, so I was trying to find some pictures, and I did find some pictures of uh, some loading buildings, basically like big wooden buildings where the coal is just transported up and then onto onto the trains. And then I also found some solutions uh, for different levels. When, for example, the coal is stored like one level above the tracks, and the and the trains just go kind of underneath it, and then people manually just shovel it into into the into the uh, into the cargo holds whatever it's called but also i was obviously thinking that i need to find something that's going to fit this place because it's leveled there's no you know multiple levels in here and i didn't find any buildings for loading coal in the workshop so i had to improvise and i found this picture with like a super minimalistic uh, place to load coal onto the trains it was just one like a big concrete block with uh, with this uh, very very simple like manually operated crane right and people just manually pushed some carts uh, below the, the the crane and obviously the the crane just picked it up the entire cart and dumped it into from above into the locomotive right so that's 
kind of what I was trying to recreate with the procedural objects in here. And it's just a tiny little detail that obviously needs to be in this area so that we can obviously have uh, the coal loaded into, into the trains somewhat. Now, I'm not claiming that that's like a super realistic thing. Uh, it's just it's just something there, right? Uh, like, like I said, we needed to put something in there. I didn't find anything in the workshop for this particular purpose. So I just had to do something with procedural objects. And I think it makes sense from engineering point of view I mean it could have been like that I'm not I'm not sure if it was super practical to put coal into the trains like this but uh that's what we have. That's what we have. Like I said, uh, we are definitely going to improve or change this place as we progress in time. Obviously, we are going to use more electric uh, locomotives in time. We are going to use more uh, diesel trains and also, also uh, all sorts of modern solutions. So we're not really going to uh, need all that coal. And uh, the infrastructure for the coal is obviously going to, uh, going to just uh, disappear in time. So that's uh, just a whole lot of detailing in this place. Uh, it was definitely necessary to put uh, different surfaces in this area. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm finished with that. I think there's going to be a couple of more shots uh, showing how I did all those things because uh, I obviously have the gravel texture. Well, it's not really gravel. I uh, intentionally use a texture that kind of looks like uh, mud or just dirt instead of gravel because I kind of like it more. But obviously, it, it's the it's the you know the old problem uh, with city skylines. You just don't have that many textures. I, I wish kind of I had a different texture for different muds and different gravel. Obviously, you don't want to have the same gravel for the railroads, for example and some, you know, roads for cars or modern surfaces for cars like I, for example, use in Aurelia those uh, gravel textures which I also use for some kind of plazas and all that I obviously wouldn't be able to use this texture for it but that's just unfortunate that uh, you, you only have a couple of textures to choose from it's the same situation with the cobblestone and concrete as well so that's just something that I need to need to work with I can obviously put some decals in places where I really want to have different texture but that's uh, that's just uh, you know what it is it is what it is so I'm also putting uh, some uh, tiny little coal place uh, into that uh, depot part of this of this entire area because like I said I'm closely following the the plans for the real life station that I found and it also had a multiple uh, places to load and unload uh, coal I'm not sure why what was the reason for that but uh, you know it felt realistic to just follow the plans so I did uh, what's not exactly how the plans were, were is that I'm putting this uh, industrial buildings in here so the depot might actually serve also as some sort of uh, uh, tiny little industrial building which was probably that big hall right there or it might be some some uh, factory for trains probably not it probably would be a lot bigger but uh, it might be just some kind of a, a light industrial uh, area of uh, of that uh, train depot as well uh, it just felt nice to position those buildings there because uh, there are those industrial buildings that do have those big halls and there's kind of a shortage uh, in the workshop again for these historical looking uh, big halls, industrial halls or just factory buildings that I can obviously use as these uh, maintenance buildings for the trains. The, the buildings obviously don't have any kind of gates or entrances or doors for the trains so I had to improvise again and put some props in there. You will see that in the cinematics that the trains, that the tracks don't go just into the walls of the buildings like I have now but there are actually uh, some props for for the doors and this is exactly what I was talking about I really don't want to have uh, like a uniform surface in here the gravel surface or pretty much the mud surface in here so I'm putting these kinds of different decals all around the area for example these uh, white-ish decals there I don't know maybe there was some kind of a cargo store there and it just colored the surface and obviously coloring uh, the surface around the coal storage uh, storage areas as as well because that obviously makes more sense and I'm just trying to put as many as many decals and details all around this area because it's quite large and uh, we do need to break this surface into into some uh, different parts and obviously just make it look more more realistic uh, as a result right so I'm also putting some trains uh, not, not trains but uh, trees 
into some of these places inside the depot just to make it a bit more green, just to make it a bit more different in some of these areas. All kinds of little fences, boxes. Uh, I also, using the mod tools, I dumped some uh, textures and models for the cars that I'm using in the game so that I can use them as props and obviously position them inside the depot as well so that uh, it just looks like a static decoration that uh, maybe they are going to transport those those crates that are all around the place and you know stuff like that so anyway we are almost finished uh, with the depot uh, for the next episode i think i'm going to go and finish some of those uh, building blocks uh, around this uh, train station probably towards the river which is probably going to be very interesting to see how that's going to turn out. I think I talked about it earlier in the episode, that there's going to be all kinds of details. We obviously need to overcome some elevation differences, so some stairs and all that. So that should be interesting. But anyway, this episode is almost uh, almost uh, over, and that's obviously going to be just the cinematics. But before I go, I just want to thank you for watching this episode. And if you liked it, then you can always put a thumbs up underneath the episode. If you really want to support the channel, then you can join it by clicking the Join button below and obviously subscribe to the channel if you are new here and share the video with your friends if you think they might like it so i will see you with some next videos guys uh, thank you again for watching today's episode of Altengrad, and i will see you some next time take care and goodbye